I'm very excited to do an episode completely on eggs. It's so versatile and it's so important to learn those basic skills. I can't tell how important I think they are to just many critical steps. I'm really excited to share the techniques that are really important. You ready? Eggs. Mother Nature's gift to all of us, especially to us in the culinary world. They're simple ingredients for a nice, fluffy, scrambled egg. I want to make sure I have lots of air into my eggs. By whisking up and down, rather than a side to side, I'm not pushing them around, I'm actually getting air into them. I'm looking for the same color and texture throughout the mixture, making sure those yolks and the whites are completely distributed against each other and almost a paler color. You can actually see little bubbles too. It's called aerating. This means we have lots of air in there. Perfect. I love talking about eggs. I love working with eggs. With my scrambled eggs, I love to use chives. Chives are grassy and dewy and fresh. They're not too strong in onion flavor. They just overall add a nice brightness to a dish, especially a nice, simple egg. So about 20 years of cooking behind me, and an old chef teach me a technique called the claw. So I'm making sure that my knuckles are flat and everything like my fingertips are tucked in. I call it the sticky claw because when I'm moving through, it doesn't leave my fingers. Keeping my fingers in, nice strokes all the way through. You can smell the chives already. It's great. My scrambled eggs, I like butter. I have to brown the butter just a little bit for more flavor. A low to medium heat. Some scrambled eggs, you can have an almost cottage cheese-like texture. So that means there's little curds. I like to have a big, softer curd throughout it. I just find it adds to the fluffiness. Scrambled eggs are one of those dishes that can get passed on. I remember my mom teaching me how and it's a dish that I can cook with my four-year-old son, Russell. Not only is it a dish that can be done quick, but he also likes to make a little mess with the eggs. It's so like all proteins that will carry over cooking. Look at those big, fluffy curds. So, different technique, the exact same ingredients. Chef. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Again, a little more fluffy, a little bit of air. Adding my butter again. With a French omelet, I don't want too much browning. They like pale omelets. Once that butter is nice and bubbly, perfect. Quick pushes from the side to the center. And this is a three-fold omelet. A little tilt. I want to make sure it's still a little bit runny. And that first fold. It's a nice little tilt, because then you'll get that middle to really get nice and gooey. All right, and put that final fold, and that's finishing it on the plate. And you can smell the melted butter. Still nice and pale, not too much color. 
and those delicious chives I was talking about. So exact same ingredients, two different techniques. One that you can have with a four-year-old, and the other that you can serve to some guests and impress them. And just perfect. You guys want to try some breakfast? Would love to. Thank you, Chef. Some little tips or techniques when you're sourcing and cooking your eggs at home. Make sure they're free range. If you can get organic, knowing what that chicken ate is the best way of knowing that that egg is going to be delicious. are just so many different ways to cook eggs. Right now, I'm showing you two different, one being the perfect poached egg, and then one as an emulsion, also known as a hollandaise. It's a sauce that binds acid to fat. The fat being butter, egg yolks, and acid, lemon. I prefer lemon juice. You can use white wine vinegar, champagne vinegar, you just need something very acidic. But I prefer lemon. It just has that natural freshness, that little bit of sweetness, really comes through in a nice, fatty, rich sauce like a hollandaise. You're gonna season the yolks and the acid at this point, and then again towards the end. All recipes, you're building flavor. Making sure they're combined. Then I'm gonna put it over a bain-marie, just a water bath. It ensures something delicate, like an egg yolk, to not get overheated. I don't wanna scramble those eggs. A little secret that I do to make sure that it's strong is I actually use my fingertips. You almost want that egg yolk to be sticky and we're almost there. Again, that just means that it's cooked enough. Eggs will get tough the more they cook. And you can start to smell that lemon at this point too. So a couple tablespoons at a time. And Chris, if you can come watch this for me. Yes, yeah, Chef. Sure. Right, the perfect poached eggs. I have two secrets for you. Both start with the letter V. The first V, vinegar. Just using a little white vinegar, because vinegar is an acid. So an acid is gonna coagulate the protein in the egg. Second V, vortex. You wanna have a nice, large whirlpool all around your pot because when I drop the egg in, it'll make sure there's that tadpole shape. You see this? Perfect whirlpool. I like to give it a quick little push around, making sure it doesn't stick to the bottom. You can see that perfect shape is forming. Excellent. Just starting to float a little bit. Once it comes to the top, it's ready. I want that nice, tough white and a nice, gooey center. You can almost see how it just kind of curls up a little bit. Oh, yeah. Again, perfect touch. I can see the jiggle inside. Smell that ham. Mm -hmm. 
so buttery, so silky. I could put this sauce on pretty much everything. Get a little bit of fresh tarragon. The freshness will add with that rich creaminess. Let's see if we have that gooey yolk. Oh, yeah. We'll share this. Thank you, Shane. Now, think about breakfast at home when I was a kid, when we actually got to sit down and enjoy it together. It was a really memorable, exciting part. of a quick, easy pasta, you think tomato sauce, but not me. I love a rich, creamy, eggy carbonara. This pasta is almost done. Carbonara, five simple ingredients. First one, guanciale. Low to medium heat. I don't want to cook it too much. I want to render. I want that fat to release from the meat. I can smell it already. You can use double smoked bacon. You can use a pancetta. Traditionally, Guanciale, we have this beautiful layer of fat, which will add to the sauce. With a little bit of meat, and then a fair amount of black pepper. Next important ingredient, and most importantly, is our eggs. Just gonna separate the whites from the yolks. You can use the whole egg, but like most chefs, we think about presentation. So I'm gonna add that yolk later on as a garnish. Also, possibly my favorite ingredient is the cheese. We have a pecorino. So this is a sheep's milk cheese from Italy. It's sharp, it's tangy, a little bit of sweetness. So adding a fair amount. Again, this was the most fatty part of the sauce at this point, before the guanciale. Just whisking the whites with the pecorino, that's gonna be the base of our sauce. And the fattiness and that protein is gonna really stick to the noodles. So I have to combine them. She's done. So just like if you were emulsifying, you don't wanna to add too much heat to a protein. I don't want scrambled eggs this time. Add a slow amount, give a nice little toss. Adding the rest. And you see that delicious goodness dripping off of those noodles? That pasta water, is that secret ingredient. It's really gonna bind the eggs and the cheese and the noodles to create that beautiful sauce. You can smell that guanciale over there. So we have that beautiful separation of the pork fat from the bits. See that beautiful little pool there? It's gonna bind with that pasta water and the cheese and the egg. And then the bonus part is those little crispy bits. So a nice, easy way for plating, using a, the flat of a spoon, kind of go against. Get your portion and start spinning. Using that flat edge of it, there you go. Keep spinning, drop it down, get a little bit of a pasta tower. Because 
presentation is always important. I like to add a little bit more cheese. I'm pretty sure you saw how excited I was about this pecorino. On top, you really just smell that guanciale coming through. You smell a little bit of fattiness and richness. I'm gonna try it. Again, make sure you're stirring in that yolk. Because we separate it, you wanna make sure that it coats your noodles. That's what makes this dish so luscious. We'll pass the twirl. Guys, you have to try this. If I had to describe the carbonara dish, I would say creamy from that cured meat. It has a little bit of that briny saltiness, as well as that fresh sheepy salty from the pecorino. And even with the texture, with that little crunchy Guanciale bits. Overall, it's just delicious because it has everything I look for. So there's no way I was gonna talk about egg techniques without covering my favorite. And that is a creamy custard. More importantly, my favorite dessert, and that's a creme brulee. I like to add caster sugar to yolks because it's a nice medium between a granulated sugar and an icing sugar. So it's a smaller grain and it has a chance to get dissolved into the yolks easily. Now the next technique is called ribbon stage. So it's just a part when we're making sure that the yolks and the sugar have completely dissolved into each other. You're looking for a pale color. Basically, you're just looking for no crunchy sugar throughout your mixture. And it's called ribbon, because when you're exactly at that point, you can lift it up and it's like a dreamy ribbon falling from your whisk. Beautiful. You can flavor your cream with many different ingredients. I love to use vanilla beans. They're just beautiful, they're simple. And if you notice that Chris just separated the seeds from inside the pods. Thank you. So this is infused for about an hour or so. It's enough for vanilla beans to really escape their oils and those seeds all the way throughout. See those nice little spots? You can really, really smell. You don't want it boiling. At this point, you just want a nice simmer. Next method, I'm just gonna temper that cream into our egg yolks and sugar. By adding just a slow amount, those egg yolks are adjusting to the temperature and they're becoming the same temperature together. A slow pour, nice slow whisk. We don't want a mousse, we don't want anything too frothy, so I'm not whisking crazy. I'm just having a nice slow stir. There's always the possibility of some of those little egg yolks getting overcooked. Maybe chewy little bits that we don't want in our custard. And the best way to cook the custard is in a water bath. This makes sure that there's proper and even temperature all the way surrounding the ramekins. So I don't have a hard hockey puck of a brulee to serve anyone. It's gonna be nice and creamy and stay at the right temperature. And just a little bit more. A couple of tablespoons, please. Perfect. Thank you. A little bit of tin foil. I don't want it tight, I just want a nice tent. I want some steam to evaporate, but this will help a skin from forming on top of the brulees. So excited. So you have to be patient with creme brulees. They're gonna keep cooking in the fridge as they cool down. Exactly where I need them to be. Sugar's looking great. Thank you, Chef. 
And now this is where that custard becomes the magical, crunchy, sugary creme brulee. You're a chef. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Possibly one of my favorite smells is that caramelized sugar. And now for that magical moment of the creme brulee, and that's the crack. The crack through that hardened sugar that lets me get into that nice, cool, creamed custard below. You can just see the cream. You can see the vanilla beans. Eggs are one of those beautiful gifts that we got from Mother Nature to all cooks. There's actually a trend that cooks and chefs get tattoos on their body of ingredients they love to work with. But the one ingredient, and the only tattoo I have, is an egg. And the other great thing about food is I get to share it with everyone.